Hello Math 8 students, this is our calculator exploration on exterior angles of a triangle. Online learners, I know that you don't have access to this type of calculator, uh, but we are going to be looking at different um, properties and relationships that I still want you to know. And so I'm going to be showing you what I'm doing with the calculator and you can just watch and observe even though you won't be able to manipulate your own document. So to get started class, we are going to start by adding a triangle. Um, before we officially add the triangle though, we wanna check our settings because my last class did change them. So everyone should be clicking on menu, option nine for settings. And then I want you to go all the way down to the bottom. The very, very last thing is automatically label points. It is unchecked, but I do want it to be checked. Make sure there is a check mark for automatically label points. That'll help us out with this uh, exploration today. Go ahead and click OK once you have verified that we will automatically label the points. And now as we build the triangle, watch me build it first because I want us to be really precise and have our labels kind of in the same place. So menu shapes, I'm going to start by adding a triangle, but when I build the triangle, since it's gonna automatically label the point, I want point A to be the one on top, so I'm gonna start with A on the top, and then I'm gonna move down into the left for B, and then down or over to the right for point C. So we should have a triangle that looks about like this, A, B, C. Go ahead and build your triangle now. Yes, sir? You have to press the space bar. Did that help? Okay, everyone has their triangle. And now we've also done this before. We've built this diagram, I think at least once or twice. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to construct a midpoint of side AC. So what that looks like, again, eyes on the screen first, watch me do it and then you can do it. Menu, construction, and midpoint. And we just need to click on the side and it will put that midpoint there. Your turn now. Again, that's menu, construction, midpoint and get that midpoint there on side AC. Okay, looking pretty good. Um, I'm looking at some student screens. You might need to make some adjustments to your, um, your triangle. We are going to be rotating it twice, so we actually need to shrink up our triangle a little bit, including my own. So I'm going to move it, shift it over to the left. You see how I did that? I just grabbed the triangle and I shifted it over. So shift yours over a little bit to the left and just kind of shrink it down. It doesn't need to be small, but knowing that I need to rotate twice, we want to make sure that we've got enough space here to be able to do that rotation twice. So Lainey, yours is good. Yeah, moving it over. Jacob, you're making yours just a little bit smaller. That's good. Okay, I think everyone's triangles look good now. And now, have we done this before with you guys? Have we done the rotation around the midpoint? I know we've done it in person, like our actual triangles. Let's do it in the calculator. So watch first, because a lot of students make mistakes on this just because they're not paying attention to how it's done. So hands off the calculator, you're watching first. And we go menu, we go transformation, and we're going to do a rotation. And this menu tells us exactly how we will do that rotation. It says first click the object, then the rotation point, and then I type in the rotation angle. So I want to rotate the entire triangle, so I'm making sure that it's showing me triangle ABC. And then I click on the specific point that I want to rotate around, and it's going to be this midpoint. Just click, and then as soon as I click, I simply type in 180, press enter, and it will do that rotation for you. Now, I'll do that one more time so that you can do it with me. Menu. Option eight is transformation. Option four is rotation. First, click on the triangle. Make sure that it is saying triangle and not just like a point. Click on that triangle, then click on the midpoint, then stop clicking and just type in 180. Stand up when this is done so that you can help others who might need that assistance in figuring this out. That's next unit. You'll find out soon.
Okay. Back in your seats, eyes on the screen. You're going to notice that even though we did that rotation, and now we've got a lot of kind of extra information on here. What happened is, just watch first, and then you can make the adjustments to your own. This was labeled A, B, C, but when we rotated it, it also relabeled those points, and they kind of overlap. So I'm just moving them so that I can see, oh, it was A, but now when it's rotated, this angle right here is the C prime. And here is the A prime, because this one was really C. So A, B, C, and then we rotate it, and A rotates into this position, and so they've labeled that A prime for us. And C rotated here to C prime, and B rotated here to B prime. So just kind of fix those labels so that I know what angles are what makes it a little bit easier to see what's happening, right? That was going to be my next question. That is a great observation. Before we do that, though, again, I don't... We're going to be doing kind of a lot with this, and so I don't want us to get lost in all of the things. So see this 180? I just want to hide it so that it's not in the way. So I'm going to go Menu, Actions. Ooh, now that I'm thinking about this, I don't know if it'll work. View, Hide. Ah, that didn't work. Let me try that one more time. Text. Yeah, that worked. Okay, did you see what I did? Menu, Actions, Hide, Slash, Show. And then you need to be careful what you click on. Make sure that, like, right now if I clicked, it would uh, hide the triangle. I don't want it to hide the triangle. I want it to hide the text. So when I click, it's going to hide just the text. And if you can't get it to hide, that's okay. Just if you can hide it, then it makes the diagram just a little bit more clean. Hit escape so that you're not still trying to hide all of the things. Hit escape so that that is no longer in your view. Okay, like I said, guys, like I said, if you can't do it, it's fine. We're moving on. If you can do it, great. If you can't, it was only an option. When we rotate a line 180 degrees around a point not on the line, where does that line go? We've answered this question before. Think about it. I'll ask it one more time and then I'll have you discuss. If I take a line, like this line of the triangle, and I rotate that line 180 degrees around a point that's not on the line, where does that line go? Talk with your groups quickly. We'll summarize in a second. Ready, set, go. When I rotate the line 180 degrees around a point not on the line, where does the line go? Okay, and now share with the class, share with the online learners, what did you talk about? Where does that line go when it's rotated 180 degrees? Logan. Yeah, the same distance from the point, which means what? Parallel, exactly. So a line rotated 180 degrees around a point not on the line, it goes to a line that is parallel. That is the key thing. And as Michael already observed, that tells us what kind of shape this is. What is this whole entire shape? It's a parallelogram. And how do we know that? Because of what Logan just said, that a line rotated 180 degrees around a point not on the line is a line parallel. So these lines are parallel. Just like this is rotated 180 degrees around a point not on the line. And is this one, so it is also parallel. So by definition, this is a parallelogram. Yes, Kaden? Uh, it probably does not actually equal a square. In fact, looking at yours, it definitely is not a square because your side lengths are not the same and your angles are not right angles. Even if it was a square. Fun fact, squares are parallelograms because they have opposite sides parallel. Now, we're going to repeat this process one more time, but instead of rotating triangle ABC, I'm going to rotate the new triangle here. So we're going to find the midpoint of A prime, B prime, this side right here. See if you remember how to do that. That's menu, construction, midpoint. You can go ahead and do this one with me. We're finding that midpoint of side A prime, B prime. Okay. 
once you have that midpoint, we're also going to rotate the triangle 180 degrees around this new point. But again, we're rotating this new triangle, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, 180 degrees around that point. So menu, transformation, rotation, selecting the new triangle, selecting the new midpoint, and then immediately typing in 180. So it will do that rotation. Stand up when this is completed. Help those who might need that help. going to clear up the diagram and I'm going to hide that 180 again, menu actions, hide show. Again, I just want to hide the text of 180, nothing else. Hit escape so that you don't keep on hiding things. I'm going to move my labels again so that I can see A prime and I can see B prime and I can see C prime in those actual angles that we're, they're supposed to be in. Everyone good? We all made it there. Okay, now I'm going to switch gears for just a second because as much as I love this diagram and as important as it is for you to see how we build that diagram, I like the colors too. So here's the notebook lesson where I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees into position. Oh, hold on. And then do it again, rotate it 180 degrees. And now we can see this diagram, which I like because it has colors. Okay, let me also make a copy of this. Okay, so this triangle has pink, yellow, and green angles. Everyone see that? Pink, yellow, green angles. We rotated it and it still has pink, yellow, green angles. They're just in new positions and it still has pink, yellow, green angles when it's rotated again, just in new positions. And what I want to do is I actually want to focus on I'll move it down here. I want to focus on, as it says up on the board, the exterior angle of the triangle. So that means I'm going to be taking a look at this angle, which is actually on the outside of the triangle. Everyone see that? Just drew an arc there. This is the angle. Can we figure out the measure of this angle? And the answer is yes, especially when we look at this diagram up above. What is the measure of that purple angle? I can move these back into place and we can see that it would measure to be, no, 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 look at the purple angle. It's not 180 degrees, because is this purple part that I outlined here, is that forming a straight line? No. So what is the measure of the angle? And I know it's not gonna be easy to say a number, but how would we describe how big that angle is? Now, talk with your groups, guys, come on. It's not 180 degrees, or I can't say supplementary either. What is the measure of this angle that I've outlined in purple? Let's try this again now. What is the measure of this angle? Is that a straight line? Is it 180? Definitely not. So let's not say 180, let's not say supplementary, just this purple angle. What does it measure to be? Dan, what do you think? It, yes, it is obtuse, but you guys are missing the point. What is the measure of this angle? Yellow. What is the measure of this angle? P pink. What is the measure of this angle? Okay, so what is the measure of this angle right here? How would I describe that? James. It is the same as pink plus yellow. Do you see how I've just slid those out of position and I can slide those right back into position? How big is this angle? It's pink and yellow together. That's interesting. Look at the original triangle. Do you see a pink and a yellow angle in that original triangle? Okay, so think about what that means then. Here, I have the green part of the angle. Green part of that triangle. 
what is the rest of that or the exterior, the outside supposed to be? It's pink and yellow. But where do I see pink and yellow? They're the other two angles. So again, let's return to that diagram in our calculator. And I want us to actually measure some angles now. I don't want you to measure angle C. I just want you to measure angle A and angle B. We've done this before. Let's do it again quickly. So menu, measure, angle. I'm going to measure angle B. So A to B to C and B to A to C. And again, you're going to see kind of the same things. We've got the angle measures kind of overlapping. So I'm just moving those around so that we can actually see them. You guys go ahead and do the same thing. Stand up when you've got your two angles measured. We're measuring angle A and we're measuring angle B, so you need to pick the points that will measure out those angles. Once you're standing, check in with those who are sitting, see if they need help, or maybe if they just need time, leave them alone and give them that time to get it done. Okay, I'm going to give just 15 more seconds, then I need to move on. Okay, have a seat, take a look at the screen. Now that I know the measure of these angles, again, tie it into what we saw here. That would be like knowing pink and yellow. So can I also figure out the measure of this part that is on the outside of that triangle? It would be pink and yellow. So what is, for mine, pink plus yellow, 99 plus 52. What's that going to be? 99 plus 52 is 151. So when I return to that document, what is the measure of this angle supposed to be? Let's test it out. Watch me first because I want to make sure that when you're doing it on your own, you're doing it the right way. Menu, measure angle and I'm measuring the whole big angle, not just B, not just A, the whole thing. So C to C to C. And what did it measure to be? 151, just like we thought it would. Now you guys go ahead and do the same. Measure that big angle, the big obtuse angle, which is formed with both of those pieces. And again, stand up when you're ready. Okay, so mine did measure that 151, but I also want the calculator to do all the work for me. So we've done this before as well. Menu, actions, text. You know what we're going to add. A plus B. Yep, menu, actions, text, A plus B. And we're going to get the calculator to calculate that for us. We've done that as well. So menu. Actions, calculate. We want to calculate this expression. And what do I want to be A? Well, the measure of angle A. And what do I want to be B? The measure of angle B. And it will also tell me that, yep, it does add to 151. Yep, menu actions, calculate. Click on that expression. Tell it what A is supposed to be. Tell it what B is supposed to be. Stand up when you have done that. I can see some of you have already completed that direction. Very good. Check in with those sitting. See if they need that help. Now, because we, because we have done so many things with this diagram, it limits us on what we can actually change. Um, 
I'm not, oh, I am actually able to change at least this point in the triangle. And you can see that as I'm changing this point, it's re-adding, but it's also re-measuring. And you'll notice that those are always going to be the same. That this sum of the exterior angle of that triangle, or excuse me, yeah, the exterior angle of that triangle is always the same as adding those two angles up, the sum of those angles. Okay, go ahead and move yours around, see if you can see those same behaviors and see those same things. Okay. Eyes on the screen. I'm going to write this down. We're going to talk about what we just discovered, the exterior angles of a triangle, which does include a little bit of extra vocabulary. So, exterior angle of a triangle. Uh, think about that. Exterior angle of a triangle. What does exterior mean, Michael? Outside. So am I talking about any of the angles on the inside of the triangle? No, I'm specifically talking about the one on the outside, which we did never realize that there was a relationship before. But the exterior angle, that means on the outside, is the same as the sum of the two remote interior angles. So like I said, this is a little bit of new vocabulary. I don't expect you to be able to say this word for word, but I expect you to know the relationship. Anyone ever used a remote control? Can someone explain how a remote control works? So the remote controls something. Does it control something that's in your hand and right next to you? No, it controls something that's what? It's far away. Like if you're controlling the TV, you're probably sitting on your couch using the remote control to control the TV that's across the room, right? Or if you're using a remote to fly a drone, then you're using the remote and you're standing on the ground and the drone is far away. It's away from you. And so that's what remote means. We're talking about this is the exterior of angle of the triangle, and we're talking about these ones, these angles, because they are remote. Or in other words, that means away. And it says interior, because what does interior mean? Inside. So we're looking at the angles that are away from this exterior one, but are on the inside. So just a little bit of vocabulary, but it makes sense when you actually break it down. And all we have to do is we just have to add them up together. Pink plus yellow is the same as this. And we can see it with that rotation, right? Pink and yellow are how we formed that purple angle there. That's gonna, that is going to be on the test. So make sure that you are aware of how we can use that relationship. Again, I'm not asking for you to define this. I'm not asking for you to state this and say remote interior angles, blah, 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 blah. Just know that relationship, okay? Uh, that is it for our calculator exploration today on exterior angles of a triangle. Um, again, online learners, I know that was probably very boring for you, but I hope that you observed and saw how we can create that relationship and understand that relationship for your test. Uh, we'll see you next time.